Hi, everybody. Well, uh, unfortunately, we heard the news today that heavy metal vocalist Steve Grimmett has passed away at the age of 62. Best known as the lead singer for the new wave of British heavy metal band Grim Reaper, he would appear on the albums See You in Hell, Fear No Evil, uh, from 1985, Rock You to Hell from 1987. The first album, See You in Hell, would be from 1984 and would of course feature the legendary title track, which is a has become a metal anthem. Uh, he would return later in his career to Grim Reaper, uh, but at that point, he, the band would be called Steve Grimmett's Grim Reaper due to some uh, legal issues with the name, and they would release uh, the album Walking in the Shadows in 2016. Steve sang with numerous other bands. One of his earliest was uh, Chateau and his very first band, Medusa. For Chateau, he appeared on their 1983 album, Chained and Desperate. He would also sing on Onslaught's uh, 1989 album In Search of Sanity. He would release four albums with the band Lion's Heart, also albums with the bands Grim Stein and the Street Steve Grimmett Band, as well as numerous guest vocal appearance, appearances on various albums. His powerful and soaring range would make him one of the most recognizable and respected singers to come from the new wave of British heavy metal scene. Sadly, he had suffered health-related problems toward the end of, his, end of his life, having to have part of his right leg amputated, uh, but nothing stopped the power of his voice, and his voice will be sadly missed. Very, very unique. Uh, one of the, in my opinion, one of the great underrated singers of heavy metal, you know, his, his voice for me is right up there in the same caliber as like Jeff Tate, as far as power and range and expression and all that. So this is really sad news to hear of his passing. So joining me here today to talk a little bit about Steve uh, Grimmett is uh, Tony Dio. So Tony, thanks. And uh, what are some of your thoughts and, uh, you know, thoughts on Steve and his various bands that he's been in? Well, you know, getting the news this afternoon, it was pretty shocking. And uh, if you just go go through Facebook and social media now, and it's just lit up with just all sorts of tributes to Steve. Uh, he was such a nice guy, and so many people just really liked him, and, and he was so friendly with people and meeting the fans, especially in, in more recent years since he's been back out doing the uh, Grim Reaper thing again. Um, I saw him for the first time. It was at the Ragnarokker Fest in Chicago, and that was in 2014. And um, they, um, Nick Bocock actually played with them at that show as well. So they it was a like you know, full on Grim Reaper show with with Nick on guitar, and because he doesn't usually play with them that much, he just does appearances every once in a while. And uh, that's the first time I met him. I met him at the, at the bar next door um, to Reggie's and uh, got to speak to him for a few minutes and stuff. And I think I was just in so much in awe. I didn't even think about getting a photo or anything with him. I was like, wow. Cause I mean, I played those Grim Reaper. The first time I ever had the Grim Reaper stuff was on cassette when I was a teenager. And I played the crap out of those tapes, those first two uh, for sure. And I loved uh, the third one as well. And um but yeah, he he's such a nice guy, and I, and I did see him again. The last time I saw him was really a few months before he went over to do the European tour, where he had the uh, the health crisis. Um, he I saw him. It was in uh, 2016. He actually played a a small bar in Richmond, Virginia, and it was a great show. The place was packed. Everybody was singing every word, and he was you could just see him. He was just feeding off the energy of everyone there. And uh, so it wasn't long after that. I think he they did a European tour. He went to I think they were in um, uh, where were they at? They were um, somewhere Ecuador maybe. And he had uh, yeah, a diabetic so. uh, blister on his foot that got infected, and they had to do a, a, a lower leg amputation. And uh, so I haven't seen him since then. I know he's been back and he's been doing shows. He's he, he's done shows in a wheelchairs. He's done shows with a prosthetic. 
uh, with a crutch. And he just I mean, it doesn't affect his performance. I mean, he's still sounding amazing in recent times when you see any videos of him. And he makes these videos and these, and these uh, social media posts. He's so positive for somebody that went through what he did. You know, he's so he's been so glad to be able to get through it and to be able to continue on with his career. So uh, he's just really loved by the metal community. And uh, it's, just, it's, a, it's a shame, you know. Um, but like I said, I've, I've followed his career for a long time since um, since the Grim Reaper days. And uh, when he joined Onslaught in 1990 on the uh, Search of Sanity record, I mean, that's such a great record. I mean, he's just, you know, I mean, that, their cover, Let There Be Rock, they actually did a 12-inch um, yeah. a, a, uh, uh, single that they did for that. It's pretty cool. Uh, they did the cover of ACDC. I remember seeing that on MTV one night, and they didn't say it was Steve Grimmett. It just said Onslaught. And I was like, that looks like Steve Grimmett, you know, from Grim Reaper singing in the video. And, of course, it comes back, and the, the VJ said that's who it was. And and so it was pretty cool. But, uh, like I said, I, I followed him. He uh, His band, uh, Lion's Heart, a couple things by them. They were more melodic, AOR, hard rock band than they were full-on metal um, he also, um, he was his first band, Medusa. They, these are some demos that came out. Um, they're really good. It's just, it's good, uh, new wave of British metal sounding stuff. It was him and a couple of guys that went on to be in the glam band, Rathchild, not the American version, but the glam band from the UK. And, and then the last few records that he's done, uh, as Steve, Gr uh, Steve, uh, Grimmett's Grim Reaper uh solid stuff i mean it sounds like the classic stuff that they did um you mentioned uh the chain and desperate record uh that is that's great i first first heard that um when i got a i got the chateau collection on cd and it and it had those songs from that from the first album was part of the collection and uh and i was reading the liner notes and i was like and i was listening to it at the same time i was reading the liner notes and we're talking about steve grimmett being the singer and i guess uh at the time he could maybe, I don't know if it was, he was, they were on the same label, Ebony, yeah. but I don't know, kind of contractual. Yeah, thing. he's only listed as like a uh, special, special banks. On One here. of my favorite. Uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure if he sings on every single song because it does also list the uh, bass player at, um, vocals. And, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, you can definitely hear his voice coming through on, like spirit of the chateau that's one that oh, i yeah. remember for this yeah, definitely awesome. definitely people out there check this out look it up it's, a, it's yeah. some good stuff um one of my favorite grim reaper songs is the ballad from the first album the show must go on i just posted that up on uh, facebook a few minutes ago and i actually this is a promo version of it on, on vinyl that it's a different recording because i mean the original album was the original See You in Hell came out in on Ebony in the UK in 83, and it didn't come out in the States till 84. And I guess they decided to re-record it for a single. But I was trying to find this version. This version is not even on YouTube, so maybe I need to put it up because people should hear it because it's definitely it's a different version than you're used mm -hmm. to hearing from the See You in Hell album. But uh, it's it's really cool. It's, it's just a great ballad. I mean, he can sing a ballad. But it's 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 got balls, you know. You he, he's he's really such a great singer, man. It's just, it's not a wimpy ballad or something, you know. And uh, yeah, he he was just he's an amazing singer and an, an amazing guy, you know. And it's 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 a shame. It really is that uh, he's gone at sixty two years old, which is so young. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember hearing them. I tell this story all the time that when I first started getting into metal, I used to listen to college radio. And there was a college radio station that played a lot of new wave of British heavy metal type of stuff. And I remember hearing See You in Hell and I mean, just his voice. Uh, when I think about the new wave of British heavy metal, of course, there were the big bands that broke out of there, like Iron Maiden and Def Leppard and, and Saxon and stuff. But I always felt like he 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 had his voice was like right up there with anybody's voice. You know, and he had that sort of powerful operatic uh, type of range to his voice. It reminded me of like a con uh, kind of a cross between Jeff Tate uh, from Queensryche and Messiah Morcolin from Candlemass. That sort of very big operatic, uh, super powerful uh, voice. And 
boy, before I made the video, I was talking to my wife and I saw Grim Reaper somewhere and both of us were sitting there and we just couldn't uh, place where we saw them. And it, I'm guessing I, we remember being backstage and seeing the band and talking to him and seeing him. So it must have been something that maybe one of my old bands, you know, they came through town or something. And I remember being in the audience and just, you know, sounded like his voice was just soaring over the PA system. I remember thinking like, I wonder if he can still, you know, hit those notes and, you know, he did it and then some. Uh, and this album in general, you know, it's really See You in Hell. I mean, it's just such a solid uh, top to bottom British, you know, classic metal album that flies under the radar a little bit. I mean, I think the song See You in Hell is kind of like a, metal anthem of sorts like balls to the wall maybe or something like that you know it's a song that i'll hear it come on the pa when i'm at a show for a band somewhere you'll hear it come on the pa system and everybody's you know getting into it and fists in the air and everything and and uh you know i actually like i was listening to this today you know and there's some really good stuff on here that i really enjoy fire is such a great song yeah, uh, and the Onslaught uh, album, I really like that. It's, you know, it's a little bit more th slightly thrashy things mm. at moments. Uh, I can't remember the song that I was hearing today. Lightning, Lightning War, Shell Shock, In Search of Sanity, you know, mm. all really good stuff. Uh, and he was, like you said, you know, he was in the last, like, so many years, he was out there touring, and you would see videos of him in a, all those German festivals, Keep It True, and things like that, you know, I don't know if he played on that specifically, but festivals like that, you know, his his band was playing, so, and then when he had that incident, uh, when he had the thing with his, with his leg, and I know, you know, the whole metal community was was pulling for them and it was inspiring to see him out there still singing and sounding sounding amazing so this this is really really sad news and if if you're out there and you and you haven't maybe you've only heard the song see you in hell uh definitely go and check out some of these other albums that we talked about today because like i said he's in my opinion this just really phenomenal singer that uh you know maybe didn't get all the recognition maybe that, that he deserved. His name should be up there when people are talking about the great metal vocalists because he just had a had a fantastic uh, voice and everything. So, One thing I did want to add, what you were talking about um, with his voice and so forth, uh, you know, he was in, supposedly he was in the running to replace Bruce Dickinson um, for when Bruce left back in, what, 1991 or two yeah. or whatever. And um, he was in running. I saw, I uh, read an interview where he said that Rod Smallwood told him he was like in the top three mm. and they ended up going with Blaze Bailey. But I, you know, he said, I would have loved to have had that job. Of course he would have. And he would have, <laughs> I think he would have done a much better job really on the uh, record. He would have knocked it out of the park. Yeah. You know, but, uh, but yeah, he like, he also, I mean, he just, uh, he put out so much good music other than Grim Reaper. So it's worth, you know, checking that stuff out, especially that Onslaught record. I mean, it was the one record, but they got back together, I think, in 2016, uh, some guys from Onslaught, and they were calling it the Sanity Days, and they were going out and playing some shows and maybe at some festivals or so forth, because I think that record did pretty well over in Europe. Yeah. Um, so they were kind of, you know, celebrating that. Um, but yeah, so much of his stuff. And those last few Steve uh, Steve Grimmett's Grim Reaper records are really worth checking out as well. Um, Grim Reaper, they, they were bands, oh, you know, that they, you know, of course, when metal wasn't popular it, during the 90s, you know, you had Beavis and Butthead making fun of them on the yeah. Sea and Hell video and stuff and all. And the videos were cheesy. They were, they were definitely cheesy, but everybody's videos were cheesy back yeah, then. Yeah. But I always thought it was just such a cool video, you know. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. They looked, they looked cool. It was just, you know, so that's the first, you know, I remember uh, seeing an ad in, I think, Hit Parader where you could see, you could send in a this certificate and get this free flexi disc, which I did and I have lost over the years. But it was a little flexi disc that they sent me from wow. RCA Records. And then it's like, while I was waiting on that to come in, I see the video on MTV one day and I was like, wow, this is really cool, you know. Yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, we just wanted to do this quick uh, tribute to Steve uh, here today. So uh, if uh, let us uh, leave some comments down below, if you've had, if you were lucky enough to, to catch Steve live with Grim Reaper or any of any of his projects or just uh, leave some comments down below with uh, with some of your thoughts. And uh, I'd like to thank Tony and uh, Steve Grimmett. Rest in peace.